we're back out here at the Big Lake once again, and today we're talking about how you can put yourself on fish without fancy electronics. And it's a lot easier than you think it is. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Got him! I got him! That's a good one. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. That is a tank. That is a tank. Um. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as anglers, if you spend any time around any amount of Tackle Warehouse or YouTube or any place online, you know you've been steadily bombarded by all the latest, greatest new tech. Case in point, all these new fish finders that we have out here, all these new types of sonar. You know, you've got down imaging, side imaging, and forward-facing sonar and 360. Back in the day, well, all we had was a flasher and some marker buoys, and that's how we did it back then. Then you got the old graphs that had the printouts on them. You remember those? They had to have all the paper that went with them. Then we got the fancier quartz or whatever liquid crystal uh, display style, the blocky style, black and white, 2D plotters that, you know, they were very hard to read out in the daylight and in the sun. But things have certainly come a long way in a very short time. Now we have forward-facing sonar, which is essentially like, you know, pointing a camera under the water and looking at the fish. Now, I'm not saying if it's good and I'm not saying if it's bad. This is not that video. What I am saying is you don't need that to locate fish. Now, case in point, right? Just this past weekend, my wife and I, we took a trip to this lake here. This is Bill Waller in Columbia, Mississippi. And it's a pretty small lake. It's about 100, 150 acres or so, give or take. Now, we did not have a lot of time to fish it and break it down. And we were taking the little boat. I had it loaded up in the back of my truck, which does not have any electronics. So if we wanted to catch fish, I needed to break that lake down quickly. And so I did step one. Step one is always going to be get on Google Earth, right? On your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. If you don't have access to any of those, head to your local library, right? Get on their free uh, internet if they have it available. Usually they do. And you can check out Google Earth. You can look at the lake you're going to fish. Now, what did I do? Well, you can see I zoomed way in and you can tell it doesn't have flooded brush the way the big lake has it. So I'm going to be doing a different type of fishing. Instead of having flooded brush, well, you can see all along here, all up and down, is nothing but acres and acres of pond weed and lily pads or water lotus, as some people call them. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. All that means is I'm not going to be skipping up under brush with a Waco jig or a tail spinner or anything like that. But what I will have tied on is a topwater frog and a heavier punching rig and a heavier flipping jig. That's what I'm going to be going with in the little time that I have to break this water down. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the orientation of how this lake is north to south so I can locate where the sun is going to be in the sky the time of day we are going to be there. Well, we were going to be there pretty early and we realized that this end of the lake was going to be the eastern side and this end of the lake was going to be the western side. So that let me know which way the shadows were going to orient themselves as the day went on. And that dictated how and where I fish. So I started out when we got there with a topwater frog and it didn't take me long before I actually got a couple of nice, good blow-ups. It let me know I was on the right track, which is actually step one, right, to when you get out on the water. The first thing that I do when I get out on the water on a new fishery or if I'm searching and locating for the fish, I grab top water. 
I will grab top water and I will throw it in places that look like they would hold bass to me. Now, I may not get a bite or I may get a blow up and a miss, but either way, that fish has let me know it is there. It doesn't matter if I didn't get a bite on top water. All I needed to do was find out if there were fish in the area. I get a swirl, I get a blow up and a miss, or I catch a fish and it lets me know there are active fish in the area. And not only can I fish this with top water, but I could probably pick it apart with other things as well. And case in point, just the other day, back here on the big lake, when we finally got back, that's exactly what I did. I took a boy howdy, got out on the lake, started searching for fish, and well, this was the result. Got him. I got him. That's a good one. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. That is a tank. That is a tank. Um, here we go. I'm going to try to boat flip this big boy. Look at this tank. Look at that. That's top water, sweetheart, on a boy howdy. That's got to be five pounds. Oh, by the way, top, top water catches big bass. Yeah. And I got... <laughs> what did I say? What did I say about this area? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <sighs> Skunk's out of the boat. That fish is probably close to 22 inches, 23 inches long. Yeah. I mean, look at that. That is a straight toad. Let that old boy go. Oh, girl, go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there it goes. Now, sometimes we'll get a little lucky, right? And we'll see those bass busting up on shad or bluegill or whatever the forage species is on your particular fishery. We get lucky that way or fortunate that way. I'm not a big proponent of luck, but you can see where the bass are. And in that instance, again, I'm going to throw top water right into that to see if I can get a bite, to see how active the fish are. And a lot of times it has really paid dividends for me. Sometimes, you know, you can see the shad busting up and you can throw a wacky rig or a crankbait over there and not get anything. There's something about, at least for me, something about top water that I can trigger a bite. And again, using that methodology, well, my wife, who is now, you know, she's really got the bass and bug, and I'm so happy for that. But she was able to catch her very first topwater fish just the other day using that strategy. We saw that there were shad uh, splashing everywhere. Now, we don't know if it was the bass that were balling them up or if it was some type of late weird shad spawn since it was almost noon during the day. But every once in a while, you would see bass jump up. For the most part, you'd see shad splash, but then you'd see bass jump up few and far between. You'd see it, you know, just in a couple of spots. But not too far from the boat, we saw a bass miss some shad. She threw her top water out there and well, this was the result. A lot of times they're just keyed in on those uh, fish. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like, right? Yep, he missed it. Go after it. That was a good one too. Go after it. They're out here. There you go. There you go, set the hook, set the hook. You got him, you got him. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a real good one, honey. That's a real good one. Let me get over here. Oh, He's gonna pull us around. That's yeah. a real. That's a real good fish. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my goodness. I got him from Panda. You foul hooked him. Yeah. But that's okay. 
bring him to me? Okay, baby. Uh, Ryan, You're okay. Just we'll swing the rod around. Oh, it's Ryan. Oh, I can't even crank it again. Oh. <sighs> Mama's first topwater fish. That was excellent. Mama's first topwater fish. This was the guy. Uh -uh. Excellent. This was the guy who was just busting up on a fish. Yes. And you caught it. Yes. You caught it. You caught it. I knew you were going to catch that. I knew you were going to catch that one. I knew you were going to catch it. I knew you were going to catch that fish. Oops, hang on. There. On the gold boy howdy. That was great. And look at that. That was great. That's got to be, I mean, even by that scale, that's more than two pounds. Zero out. Come on now. 2.3? 2.7. 2 2.7? 2 2.7 right on the nose. All right. Everybody at home can see that? I think you can. Hang on. Okay, 2.7. So Mama caught her. All right. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Give him a second, give him a second. There we go. He's got to realize he's in the water. That is so good. <sighs> it's going to be a good day, honey. That is so good. Mm -hmm. So if you give those bass a chance, they will let you know where they are. And that is the crux of the entire situation. You've got to get those bass to reveal their location to you. And if you're fishing up shallow, like I do, you don't really need electronics. I rarely use electronics. If I'm on the bass buggy and I'm out deep and I'm scanning and graphing, that's different. But up shallow, I don't have any need for electronics. I come out to the big lake, I catch, you know, four or five bass or so in an hour or a couple hours, however long that I'm here. Today was a better day than some, but still, I didn't need any electronics. I was able to locate bass and put myself on bass in a hurry without the need of electronics. Now you say, but Lowbrow, you know that lake. Lowbrow, you go out there almost all the time, so you've got that lake memorized and all the patterns uh, working. To which I say, yes, absolutely, that is the entire point. I did the leg work. I put the hours in on the water to break this lake down. I'm not interested in where those fish aren't. I'm only interested in where those fish are. So I get to working on that mentality as fast as I possibly can. I want to go straight to where I think those fish are and start working from there. You know, like the man said, work patterns, not spots. And that is a great way to put yourself on fish as quickly as possible without electronics. Say you're on your home lake, right? And you're looking around and you see, I see a main lake point that's got um, docks on either side of it, right? So you say, okay, well, that looks like a good spot. So you go fishing. You catch fish off of one, but not the other. But still, you located fish and you did it without the need for electronics. So that's the types of things that we're looking for. You want to do the things that, you know, will, will best put you on fish. Whether you have a lot of electronics or don't, that's what you're looking to do. And for me, you know, in my fishery, I'm looking for the overhanging brush. That's, there we go, I got him. I'm looking for the overhanging brush that's kind of shallow. He's not big. Ooh, there he goes. But, uh, he's not bad either. Ooh, he's digging pretty good. I mean, I got him. I got him. He's not bad. Let's get him up here in the boat. On that pared down tail spinner worm. I mean, there he is. Right? I mean, he inhaled it. It's down there. It is down there, so we got to take a second and get that out of his face. 
No, one point here. That's what it's saying. So we're going to go with that. 1.82. Good fish. Good first fish. Right at close to 2 pounds. Right at close to 2 pounds. So that was a good start. So that, here. So that little tail spinner, paring it down, making it smaller, that's what we got in just a few minutes. Alright, buddy. There he goes. Safe and sound, back down to the depths. Alright. That's one in the boat, but we caught on the pared down tail spinner. Let's see if we can do it again. Let's see if we can do it again. And we know that they are active in this area. We know they are active in this area, but that little tail spinner, I said I cut it down, and the problem that I had with it, I was catching fish, but I was also losing a lot of fish because they were biting that spinner and not going after the worm. So and we, you know, we put ourselves on fish right off the bat, you know, and that's the moral of the story, right? That's the lesson right there is you got to put your, you got to do the things that will put you on fish. And the funny thing is, is I've actually had people, you know, they see me catching fish and they will come right up on top of me, come right up on top of me. And just because you're in the area doesn't mean you're on the right technique. Just because you're in the area does not mean that you're going to be on the right technique. And again, we're... There we go, guys. That's a good one. That's a real good one, kids. That's number two. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? And that's... Get in here. And that's number two. In the same area. He's not as big as the first one. He's not as big as the first one. Tell me I'm recording. Looks like I'm recording. It's hard to tell. But that's two. Get out of here. Get the tail spinner out of the mouth. Get the tail. There we go. But we may be in for a pretty good day. He's pound and a half. Right at a pound and a half. Another beautiful fish. Let me do the hand spread thing. So can... That's another beautiful fish. Another gorgeous fish. Let's go ahead and get him back in the water. And there he goes. So as I'm doing those things, I'm finesse fishing, but I'm finesse fishing with purpose, with urgency. Those baits are not in the water any longer than they have to be. I'm getting them out there, making my presentation, and then bringing them back. And that's how I'm covering water. Plus, it also gets those fish to reveal themselves, which is what we're looking for. When you don't have electronics to see those fish, the best thing you can do is get those fish to reveal themselves, which is what we're trying to do. We are trying to elicit a response, whether we get a swirl, whether we get a follow, whether we actually get a bite, or whether we actually catch a fish. Those are the types of things that we are trying to do. And the way that I do those best are with weightless Texas rigs, wacky rigs, spinner rigs, um, Waco rigs and you know slower top water right you can use a buzz bait or you can use a walking bait but for me a prop bait or something like a boy howdy or a popper those are going to be the things that I use to deliberately search specific targets to see if I can get a reaction or get a fish to reveal itself. So there you have it those are some of the things that I like to do when I get out on the lake that help me put myself on fish very quickly, a lot of times extremely quickly, without the aid of any sort of electronics. It's something that I've been doing for years. Now, again, I'm not saying that electronics are bad. I use them on the bass buggy all the time. But a lot of times, whether you're a bank angler or whether you're fishing from a little plastic fishing boat like I do, you just don't have electronics. And that doesn't mean you don't want to catch fish any less. But you just have to work harder to find them, it seems. But when you put those pieces of the puzzle together, well, Things just seem to fit in place and you're able to put yourself on bass repeatedly over and over again 
and you did it completely without the use of any electronics. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.